What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to talk about completing the square. So many students struggle with it. Number one, because they don't know why they're doing it. When you don't know why you're doing something, it makes it even that much harder. And also because students don't know how to do it. And when you don't know how to do something, obviously you can't do it. So let's talk in this video a lot about why we complete the square, why it's so important. So hopefully you find value in it. And then hopefully that makes actually learning how to do it a little bit easier. All right, so let's talk about what a perfect square is. So first off, most everybody knows that 36 is a perfect square. Why? Because it can be written as 6 times 6. 81 uh, is a perfect square. Why? Because it can be written as 9 times 9. Uh, 25 is a perfect square because it could be could written as 5 times 5. 15, not a perfect square because it cannot be written as a number times itself. So the idea is that Anything squared, use an A for anything, anything squared is a perfect square. Why? Because it can be written as something times something. Anything times that anything, right? So that's a perfect square. So, you know, X squared in itself is a perfect square. Why? Because it can be written as X times X. Um, smiley face squared is a perfect square because it can be written as smiley face times smiley face. Even a binomial like X minus 5 is a perfect square. X minus 5 squared, excuse me, is a perfect square because it could be written as X minus 5 times X minus 5. Now that you hopefully know what a perfect square is, which you should have already known, but now we love perfect squares because when they're involved in an algebra equation, they're really, really easy to solve. For example, x squared equals 4. This is such a simple equation to solve. All you got to do is take the square root of each side. Oh, sorry for those big square roots there. And a square root cancels out the square. We get x. Now, the only thing you got to remember is it could be plus or minus 2 because 2 times 2 is 4 and so is negative 2 times negative 2. Sorry for that really big um, square root there. I didn't mean for that. Uh, so again, it makes it really easy to solve. Let's do another one, right? A squared equals 15. And you may say, well, 15 is not a perfect square, but that's okay. Check this out. Square root each side and A equals positive or negative the square root of 15 because the square root of 15 times the square root of 15 is... 15. So even though it's not perfect, we can still solve. We just have this unperfect answer, but it's still easy to solve. Even when we have x plus 5 squared equals 16, for example, again, because we have this perfect square, this is the, you know, this is the perfect square right here. Because we have this perfect square, it makes it so easy to solve. All you got to do is take a square root of each side, square and square root cancel, x plus 5 equals, don't forget the plus or minus 4, could be 4 or negative 4. Then we have to subtract 5 from both sides. And x equals negative 5 plus or minus 4, which gives us two answers, negative 1 and negative 9. Okay, again, so reason number one why we love perfect squares is that when they're involved in an algebraic equation, they do make it pretty easy to solve. Okay, now the idea of completing the square comes from working with quadratic functions or quadratic equations, right? And we usually complete the square to try to solve them. So let's talk a little bit about quadratic equations and why it actually, this is the second reason why these perfect squares, this idea of completing the square is perfect. So, all right, so, you know, most students are very familiar with the standard form of a quadratic it looks like AX squared plus BX plus C. Great form, awesome form, but the problem is you can't just look at this form and really know anything. Like, it's not like I could look at this. Let me just give you an example here. 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. Just, just made up some numbers there. You, I mean, unless you're like a genius, nobody could just look at that and instantly know the zeros or the solutions, which are really important, right? Nobody could really do that. Um, nor the vertex, right? This is, of course, going to make a parabola. That's the graphical representation of a quadratic. And, and we like to know this vertex. And, and again, you can't really look at this and instantly, without doing any math work, know the vertex. So this kind of has, you know, it's, it's a great form, but it just, it's got some drawbacks. And then we also have factored form. Now, the problem with factored form, the first problem with factored form is it needs to be factored, right? So you got X plus a number, and then you got X minus or, or plus a number. Well, you guys know how to factor, I hope. So the idea is that factored form is great because we're in factored form. 
you could very easily see the solutions. But the problem is not all quadratics are factorable. But let me just explain this real quick. Let's just say we're in factored form x plus 2 times x minus 3. Completely just made this up. And but I can look at this right away and say, oh, x equals negative 2 is a 0. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. x equals 3 is a 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. Okay, great. So that means we know the solutions. So when you're in factored form, it's pretty cool, pretty nice, pretty easy to see solutions. doesn't involve a ton of work. But not all quadratics are factorable. And what about that vertex? We, we'd like to know that vertex can't really see that vertex too well. So the other form of a... A quadratic that we absolutely love is what we call vertex form. And vertex form looks something like this. Okay, now in this form, H and K is the vertex, which allows us to see the vertex really, really easy. Just look at it and see the vertex. But there's also something cool about this one I'm going to show you in a second. But this is called vertex form. The reason why we love vertex form is it allows us to see the transformations and it allows us to see where that vertex is. So let me just throw out an example right here real quick. X minus 5 squared plus 7. Okay, when you're in vertex form, remember, if you learned about transformations, the plus 7 on the outside of the function tells me that this graph got moved up 7. So this parabola that originally started right here, well, that's kind of bad, sorry. Let me draw that again. This parabola that started right here at 0, 0 is now moved up 7 units. Now, we also see the negative 5 in here, but it's opposite. It's actually going to move it to the right 5. And hopefully you guys remember that from the transformations. It's going to go right 5. So this new parabola is somewhere up here with a vertex of 5, comma 7. It went right 5, up 7. So again, vertex form is awesome because all we got to do is look at it to know what that um, vertex is. Okay. And the other reason why we love vertex form is because when you're in vertex form, it's actually quite easy to solve. Even if it's kind of complicated, it's really easy to solve when you're in vertex form. So let me just give you this quick example. Now, here's another example of a vertex form. So hopefully by now you could say, okay, I, I know the vertex. The vertex is going to be up, or excuse me, down 8. So the y core of the vertex is negative 8. And it's going to be right 3. So it's 3 comma negative 8. That's awesome, right? It's one of the reasons why we love vertex form. But we also love this form because it's really easy to solve. It's not very complicated at all. We don't need a quadratic formula. We don't need any truly advanced math. All we got to do is set it equal to 0 because that's how you find a solution. It's where the graph equals 0, also known as a 0. And now we just got to solve this. We're going to add 8 to the other side. And we get x minus 3 squared. And then now we're in that situation I mentioned earlier where we got this perfect square. Anything squared is a perfect square, so just take a square root to get rid of it. So we have plus or minus. Now, hold on a second. I like to reduce. 8 is 4 times 2. 2 could come out. Excuse me. 4 is perfect, so it can come out as a 2. So we get 2 radical 2 there equals x minus 3. Then we're going to add 3 to the other side. We've got to add 3 to solve for x. So we get 3 plus or minus 2 radical 2 equals x. How cool was that? The quadratic form is awesome and it works, but this to me worked a lot faster. It got me a nice reduced answer even faster. So here's the deal. When, when you're in this form, this ax squared plus bx plus c form, first and foremost, you can't know the vertex just by looking at it. That's a drawback. And it's kind of hard to solve. Like, you know, let me kind of put it into this form real quick here. So I'm just going to make one up here. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so if I said, hey, solve this, and uh, most people say, uh, let me try to factor it. Oh, no, I can't I can't factor it. This, this one is unfactorable, so go ahead and try But I'm just telling you, I can't factor. So most kids think factoring, that's out the window. And then the quadratic formula will always work. Don't get me wrong. The quadratic formula will definitely work. But... It's amazing how many kids mess up the quadratic form. They either forget it, or they do some simple math that's wrong, or they don't reduce it properly. So the point is, like, I can't start solving this very easily. And some kids who don't really know a whole lot, who aren't really paying attention, they'll, they'll try to, like, subtract the 1, and they'll try to, like, oh, let me let me take a square root, but that that, can't, that doesn't work because you, this isn't a perfect square, so that doesn't work. And it, you, you, you really can't solve this. Truly, the only way to solve this is with the quadratic formula. And to some kids, that's not, like, that's great, it works, but it's a formula. They want to know how to get their hands dirty and solve it. And again, that's why when you're in vertex form, 
it's really, really easy to solve. So I hope I've convinced you, and I know I've talked for a lot here, but hope you convinced you two reasons why we love perfect squares, because they make solving really, really easy. And when we're in vertex form, which incorporates one of those perfect squares, it makes it really, really easy to solve and find your zero. So the whole point of what is completing the square, completing the square is getting us, producing us a perfect square that can allow us to put ourselves in vertex form, which makes quadratics really, really simple. So in a nutshell, that's why we complete the square. So now let's talk about how to complete the square. Let's start with the number 15, for example. 15 is not perfect, right? Because no number times itself is 15. So we can, we can complete it by adding 1. That's completing the square. When we add 1, we have now completed it to be a perfect square of 16, which is, of course, 4 times 4. So we had to add something extra to complete the square. And that's actually a very you know, watered-down version of what completing the square is all about. So let's take a look at some perfect squares. So x squared minus 10x plus 25 is perfect. Why? Well, when we factor it, we get x minus 5 times x minus 5, which is x minus 5 squared. So this is a perfect square. This is just its trinomial representation. Same thing over here. This is x squared plus 8x plus 64 is going to be, uh, actually, I think I messed this up. This should be a 16. Sorry, bad example. I'll make that a 16 and it'll work. x plus 4 times x plus 4. Again, x plus 4 squared, a perfect square. And again, that is the perfect square, and this is just its trinomial representation. So what we want to say is, you know, wh what's the connection here? Because we love these perfect squares, right? Well, the connection is very simple. If you look at this middle number right here, actually, let me highlight it. This middle number, half of that middle number is negative 5. Notice that negative 5 is really important because it's the same number used twice when we factored or once if we just write it as x minus 5 squared. But negative 5 squared is also this back value. And this is always the case, even over here, right? Half of 8 is 4. That 4 is what we used when we factored, and the 4 we used right here. And 4 squared made the 16. So that's the connection, right? When we want to complete the square, here's the idea. So we have x squared plus bx, okay? Now, if we take half of b, b divided by 2, half of b, right? b divided by 2. If we add that on squared, that's the back part. Half of b squared is the back part. And then when we want to write it as a perfect square, it's x plus b over 2 squared. So again, that's the connection. That's how simple it is. All you need to know is that b number, that b number right there, half of it, b divided by 2, squared is your back term, and we use that number right there in terms of our factoring. So this is why, again, completing the square is actually quite simple. So let's just do a quick example. Okay, so we have x squared plus 6x. How can I complete the square to write this as a perfect square? Well, half of 6 is 3. I'm going to write that number down, circle it. 3 squared is 9, so I'm going to add 9. And then now I could write this as x plus 3. Where did I get that 3 from? Right there. I circled it, remember? Squared. Don't believe me? Go ahead and do x plus 3 times x plus 3. And you will get x squared plus 6x plus 9. So I had to add 9 to get to complete the square. Where did I get 9 from? It was half of 6 squared. Again, that goes back to my formula, which I had right here, right? The number here that you add on is half of b squared. Now, even if it's something kind of weird, don't panic. I get kids all the time that panic. x squared plus 5x. They say, oh, well, it's, it's an odd number. I guess I can't do it. Oh, come on. What's half of 5? 5 halves. What's 5 halves squared? 25 fourths. You shouldn't even need a calculator for that. So again, there's my half number, just 5 divided by 2, half of 5, squared is 25 fourths. So then I get x plus, what do I put here? Oh yeah, my half number, 5 halves. Don't be afraid of fractions, people. So there we go, x plus 5 halves squared. It's really, really, really that simple. All right, so now let's actually start off with a function here. Okay, so we have x squared minus 6x plus 1. We say, okay, let's let's... Let's write this as vertex form, which involves a perfect square, right? Vertex form involves these perfect squares, which we now know how to create. So I say, okay, let's write this in vertex form. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, obviously this is not a perfect square. Go ahead and try to factor it. It cannot be written as something times itself. 
So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the plus one over to the side for a second. Because obviously the plus one is not making it perfect, right? So I can't get rid of it, but I could certainly move it over. So now i got to figure out what can I add on to make it perfect? Well, that's where we got to remember the very simple idea. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. Write it down, circle it so you don't forget it. Square negative 3, you get a positive 9. That allows me to write this as x minus 3 squared. Yay! This is so awesome. This is easy. But hold on a minute. I'm not done yet. What about that plus 1? And what about the fact that you can't just randomly add 9 to an equation because that completely changes it? So hold on. If I simultaneously subtract 9, I'm really just adding 0. Plus 9 minus 9 is adding 0. And when you add a 0, you're actually not changing it at all. So then I'm just going to use the 1 and the negative 9 to get a negative 8. So that's just going to sit over there to the side. So the x minus 3 squared is still my perfect square that I wanted to make so badly. There it is. And then the negative 1, or excuse me, the positive 1, the negative 9, made the negative 8, which is just sitting off to the side. And that's totally fine because that's vertex form, right? And now that I'm in this vertex form, I know that the vertex is going to be right 3, down 8. So that's going to be negative 8 for the y, 3 for the x. That's going to be the vertex. That's awesome. And then now look how easy it is to solve this. Set this equal to 0. x minus 3 squared minus 8. Add the 8 to the other side first. In fact, this is the same problem we already kind of did earlier. Square root, square root, which now makes it so easy to solve. Plus or minus 2 radical 2. Remember, 8 is 4 times 2. The 4 comes out as a 2. I know I'm rushing that, but you guys should be good at that. And then add 3, so we get 3 plus or minus 2 radical 2 equals x. How awesome, how easy was that? And all I had to do was complete the square to get that done. This is why completing the square is so awesome. This is why we love completing the square, because it allows us to solve quadratics by hand, which is like every pre-calculus and algebra 2 teacher's dream is solving quadratics by hand. We love that. So hopefully you guys understand it. Now, I do get a lot of kids that say, well, I was taught to move the 1 to the other side. So let's kind of show that real quick. So we have f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 1. A lot of kids will say, okay, I'm gonna, I was taught that you got to move the 1 to the other side. It's the same thing that I just did. All right, so that don't sweat it. So if, you're go, if you are going to move it to the other side, it's totally fine. Okay, and now I'm going to say, okay, now I'm going to complete the square. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. Write it down. I, I like to write it down because I'll sometimes forget it. <laughs> and I get, uh, I'm going to have to take negative 3 squares, 9, so I'm going to add 9. And there's my x minus 3 squared. x squared minus 6x plus 9 factored as x minus 3 times x minus 3. So there it is. But again, I can't just add 9, right? I mean, it's going to change everything. So that's why I also need to subtract 9. So 9 positive 9 and a negative 9 make 0, so I really haven't done anything. But then, just like you move the negative 1 to their side, I'm going to move the negative 9 to their side by adding 9. So I'm going to add 9 to the other side. So that's what, you know, some kids are, well, if you add 9 to one side, i got to add 9 to the other side. Yes, but understand this for a second. If I add 9 and subtract 9 on the same side, I have done nothing because that's a 0. If I add 9 to the right side and add 9 to the left side, that's the same thing. I've done nothing because I've added 9 to both sides. And essentially, when we talk about adding 9 to both sides, we really added 9 and subtracted 9 on the same side, but then we moved the minus 9 to the other side with addition. So it's the same thing. Hope you guys understand that. So I get 8 equals x minus 3 squared, and then you can again solve that like we just did. So really, really, really simple. All right, let's try another one just to see how you're doing. And feel free to pause the video and, and kind of do it on your own if you want. x squared minus 5x minus 7. All right, so again, pause it and then replay it if you, want, if you think you want to try it on your own. But here I go. So I'm going to go ahead and move the minus 7 to the side for a second. Half of negative 5. Okay, don't let odd numbers make you guys afraid. Come on, just negative 5 halves. You cannot be scared of fractions, and especially when taking half of a number so easy. All i got to do is divide it by 2. All right, so now we got to square that. So that's going to be a positive 25 fourths. And then again, to factor it, it's x minus 5 halves times x minus 5 halves. I mean, I built it to be a perfect square. But again, I can't just add 25 fourths without also subtracting 25 fourths on the same side. And this is where kids panic even more because 
They got fractions. Oh, come on. Don't be that afraid of fractions. Obviously, you could grab a calculator. Obviously, you can grab a calculator. Or you could treat negative 7 as negative 28 fourths, getting a common denominator. Right? That works. Negative 28 fourths is negative 7. So we get negative 28 and a uh, negative 25, which makes negative 53 fourths. So I got negative 53 fourths. Ugly, yes, but come on, it's still numbers. We can't, just because it's a fraction, we can't say it's ugly. All right, now let's go ahead and solve this. Set it equal to zero. Uh, equals x minus 5 half squared minus 53 fourths. And again, I, 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 now, I now know my vertex, right? My vertex is going to be positive 5 halves, right? 5 halves down 53 fourths, so negative 53 fourths there. All right, so I'm going to add the 53 fourths to the other side to solve. Again, I want to really make sure I explain why we love vertex form because we can see that vertex. It's so great. All right, square root both sides. Now, uh, the square root, don't forget the plus minus. Square root of 53 is not perfect, so, oh well, just write it as the square root of 53, and nor is it reducible. And, but the square root of 4 in the bottom is a 2, so come on, don't ever leave that 4 down there when it's a perfect 2, so do that. And then we have the x minus 5 halves, and then, of course, I have to add that now to the other side, so I get positive 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 53 over 2. That equals x. Now, I'm just going to tell you right now, this could not be factored. So that's one thing that you, you know, trying to solve this by factoring just isn't going to work. The quadratic form, though, works. But I'm going to tell you right now, the number is going to get kind of ugly, and you may easily mess up the reducing and the simplification of it all. But when you're in this vertex form, it works great. So this is why we absolutely love completing this square because it produces these perfect squares that are really easy to solve really really easy to solve and it's all about producing these values these trinomials that are perfect okay so again that's all we're trying to do we're just kind of trade these perfect trinomials that's all we want to do that's why we love completing the square it's so awesome it's so fun and so many kids get caught up in the fact that's in the equation right completing the square is just a process of making it pretty right the completing the square is just this part it's just saying hey i i, I went from this guy that wasn't perfect it wasn't um nice and perfect squared, and then I made it a perfect square, right? That's the process. Then the solving comes after that. That's just one of the benefits of when you're in this, this vertex mode. Solving is so nice and simple. So it's just like a, you know, it's like a, a positive attribute that comes afterwards, right? So you can't worry so much about completing the square and it being difficult. It's, you know, it, sometimes there's just so much involved that we think it looks difficult, but really the completing the square itself is really the easy part. And again, let's just kind of throw another example out at you here just to make sure everybody is aware of how things work. I don't want this to be too confusing. And you might say, okay, is this perfect? I, I don't know. It doesn't, certainly doesn't look perfect, right? And you could try to factor it. And trust me, you're not going to get the same thing times itself. So again, I'm trying to give you an example here that it's not, it, it's still obviously a quadratic, but I don't have the, the f of x. I'm not asking you to solve it. I just want you to complete the square. So again, that's all we do is we're just going to kind of push the 18 over to the side for a second. Just say, hold on, because uh, with the 18, sorry, you're not perfect. We love you, 18, but you're not perfect right now with us. Half of uh, 12 is 6. 6 squared is 36. We're going to go ahead and add that 36. That guarantees this is beautiful, perfect square. But you can't add 36 without subtracting 36. Come on, it got to be fair. So 18 minus 36 is a negative 18. So there we go. So this right there, and this right here are equivalent. They are equal. They are the same thing. But this is general standard form, which is kind of hard to do stuff with. And this is vertex form, which is really easy to do stuff with. And look, come on, how easy was it to complete that square? wasn't difficult at all. It was very, very simple. That's why we love it. And then now, if you want to go ahead and say, well, wait a minute, this is an official function, and now I need to solve that function by setting it equal to zero. Well, now you can do it. Add the 18 and take a square root of each side, and yada, yada, yada. Life is easy. Life is great. So simple. But completing the square itself, it's a really simple concept. Now, with all that said, let's go back and quickly talk about the idea. Right Here's the general formula for completing the square. First off, we have this bx, that's the key number, and then we're going to take half of that, b over 2, and that's what we square, 
half of that square. I'm just kind of ending with making sure you guys see this. And then that x plus b, my handwriting's bad, sorry, b over 2 squared, right? There we go. There's the completeness square. This completes the square. It makes it really simple for everything. All right, now, it can get tricky because the this general formula, this general um, breakdown of how to complete the square, there's got to be a 1 in front of the x squared. So what do you do if there's not a 1 in front of the x squared? So let's look at an example real quick here of a function like this. Because this is where I will even admit, as, as a teacher for 19 years, I will even admit that this is where things can get a little bit hairy. Okay, so we got 2x squared plus 14x plus 5. We got that 2 there. So this is where completing the square is going to be a little bit trickier. I'm going to definitely take my time and even try to write a little bit neater here. First off, my first step is still to move the 5 over to the side so I can complete the square. But I cannot take half of 14 because, go back to our formula, when you do, when you are ready to take half of this b value, you need a 1 in front of that x squared, which I don't have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the 2. I'm going to factor out this 2, and I get x squared plus 7x. Now, I still have the 5 over here. Please don't forget it. Now, I'm ready to do my half value. I just got to worry about that 2 sitting there. Half of 7 is 7 halves. 7 halves squared is 49 fourths. Guys, you don't need a calculator for that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and write this. I'm trying to be super neat here, even though I'm still not. I have now, if you factor that, that's going to be x plus 7 halves squared. Right, and the 2 is just kind of sitting out there nice and pretty. So again, look, at, look how simple that was. I just had to factor that 2 out first. Half of 7 is my 7 halves. There it is right here. And then there's the 49 fourths I got. Now, hold on. Can't just add a 49 fourths, right? But here's actually the trick to this. I actually did it out of 49 fourths. Looks like I did, but, I mean, it's right here. There's a 49 fourths, but really, this 2 is here. So there's the 2x squared. There's the 14x, which were definitely part of the original problem. But that's not a 49 fourths. It's a 2 times 49 fourths. 2 times 49 fourths. So because I factor out that 2, that 2 is sitting there, and that 2 would need to get multiplied by anything that's inside the parentheses. There's the 2x squared, there's the 14x, and that's what's actually going to make this a 2 times 49 fourths, which is pretty easy because the 2 reduces that 4 to a 2. So I get 49 halves. So I actually added 49 halves, and I can't just add a 49 halves unless I also subtract a 49 halves. Okay, hopefully that made sense because that's where it's a little bit tricky. Totally get that that's where this can get a little bit tricky. But that's what I did there. Hope everybody sees that. Looks like a 49 fourths, I know, but it's a 49 fourths times 2, which is really a 49 halves. So if I'm going to add a 49 halves, I got to subtract a 49 halves. Now, I'm going to write 5 in my head. I'm thinking 5 is 10 halves. So I got 10 halves minus 49 halves. And hopefully that's pretty easy math to do. Maybe grab a calculator if you need to, but that's going to be negative 39 halves. All right, so here I go. My nice final answer in vertex form is 2 times x plus 7 halves squared minus 39 halves. So this is going to be left 7 halves. My vertex is going to be negative 7 halves down negative 39 halves. Kind of ugly, I know, but that's what it is. All right, then you may ask, well, how do I solve this? Well, we're going to set it equal to 0 and solve. And I'm running out of room, so I might have to go to a new slide here in a second. First thing I'm going to do is add the 39 halves to the other side. I know I'm getting messy here, sorry. Trying to be neat. And then I'm going to divide both sides by this 2 right in front here, right? I'm going to divide both sides by this 2 right here. Divide by 2. Now, dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. Divide by 2 times by 1 half is the same thing. So I get 39 fourths equals x plus 7 halves squared. Now, again, this is why we love this. Look, I'm doing all this by hand. Square root both sides. Okay, now I'm going to come over here. Sorry, because I'm running out of room. So, again, don't forget the plus or minus in front of a square root. Square root of 39 is certainly not perfect, so I'm going to leave that as the square root of 39. And then the square root of 4 in the denominator is a 2. So, please don't leave that 4 there when you know that it's perfect, okay? Come on, the square root of 4 is 2, right? I hate, I 
I wouldn't say hate. I dislike it when kids leave it as a square root of 39 over 4 when, come on, the 4 is perfect. I know the 39 is not, but the 4 certainly is. And then this is x plus 7 halves. Now all we got to do is subtract 7 halves from both sides. And we get negative 7 halves plus or minus the square root of 39 over 2 equals um, x. Sorry, a little messy there. I know it got messed at the end, but hopefully that all makes sense. So, really tough problem. I'm going to tell you right now, this could not be factored. And the quadratic formula works. Like, listen, I'm not trying to discredit the quadratic formula, but to me, the quadratic formula really is kind of like a cheat. It's not pure mathematics of how to do the problem. It's, it's, it's like cheating. But listen, do it. Check your work with it. I think that's great. But to complete the square here, a little bit tricky because i got to factor out that 2. Then I had the 7. Half of 7 was the 40, was the 7 halves, which I squared to get the 49 fours. Then you got to be extra careful because it looks like you added 49 fours. So most kids will say, well, I need to subtract 49 fours, but not really because that 2 needs to be distributed to it. So it's really a 49 halves. And then combine everything. And then at, at that point, I'm done, right? And I just want to make sure I'm very clear on that. Like when you get to this point, you have completed this square. You're done. And then you say, oh, now you want me to also solve this? Okay, now I got to set it equal to zero and solve. You know, so it's like really two steps. So completing the square is everything above this blue line. Everything below it is now let me solve it. So I 100% agree that completing the square can be a little bit tricky when you have a coefficient in front of that x squared because you got to do a little bit of work. It does sometimes create fractions, which you can't be afraid of. But the point is, if you're trying to get this nice, beautiful, perfect final answer, quadratic formula could be a little bit convoluted sometimes and could be you got to reduce, things get numbers get kind of big and ugly. Where here, if you complete the square, everything kind of reduces on its own. And the math actually is pretty simple. So I hope I've convinced in this video First off, what completing the square is all about. It's all about working with perfect squares. We love perfect squares. But I've also, I hope I've also convinced you that A, it's easy to do, and B, it's really important to know how to do because it, it, it's, it allows us to get into this vertex form for quadratics. In vertex form, we could see the vertex, and we could do basic algebra to solve for x. And I think that that's so valuable to do. I never touched the graphing calculator. I never even touched the calculator even to do any of the math in this video. And I think being able to do that on your own is so important. And that's why completing the square truly is an amazing thing. Hope you've learned about it. Hope it refreshed your memories if, if you learned about it in the past. And I hope you understand the importance of it in this video. All right, guys, that's it. I know it was a long one, but it's a pretty important video. It's a pretty big topic. All right, love you. See you later.